8 o'clock tour yesterday. And you're going to hear more about this because it does happen. Um, not just in the room where I'm going to tell you all about it, but I guess it happens all over the place. Um, last night, or right above us, that is one of the locations we're going to be going to tonight. Right above us, I had a woman and her earring was taken out and dropped onto her shoulder while we were up there. And that was really exciting. You'll hear a lot more about that um, on the little ghost tour. But, uh, yeah, that is very possible it might happen. Um, so that's the only story I had from yesterday, really. Now we're going to get to the equipment. First thing is, everyone knows what this is, I assume. Walkie talkie, not very difficult. Um, oh, actually, before I handle these up, we're not going to split into three different groups. Uh, we're not going to be investigating one large crowd. So I'm going to do that now. You five. You kind of already were handling that makes it easy. Awesome. Um, this. You four are already standing by each other. You guys, everyone okay with this? Anyone opposed to this? All right, cool. Thank you, those people that you are going to be spending the next uh, about two and a half hours with. <laughs> so get to know each other. If you haven't already. All right. So walkie talkies. Um, really, there's only one reason for these. I'm going to hand one of these out to each group. The reason I'm giving you a walkie talkie is because we are going to be rotating every location. There is upstairs in the carriage house, there is the first floor of the mansion, there is the bottom floor of the mansion. <laughs> Those are the three areas we're going to be investigating tonight, and every 25 minutes we're going to rotate, and each group is going to get their own chance in every location. So whenever it's time to rotate, I'm going to come over the walkie talkie because I'm also going to have one. And I promise, when that happens, it will scare whoever is holding that watch. Huh? <laughs> we had uh, the last group when we done this. Yeah. One of the groups, someone was kept pushing the, the transmit button. Yeah. And they were like, yeah. "Who's doing that?" He's like, "We can't get it to quit." Because <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to get, they were in the basement. They're like trying to get Sarah to, you know, and then was was, awesome. and he was like, and they would come up and what they said, like, "Stop doing it!" And he's like, "We're not doing it." <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah. Like it's going on the sun because we could all hear. Yeah. That's another good thing to keep in mind. Everyone is on the same channel for these walkie talkies. Uh, so if something is starting to go on, you're getting some crazy experience you want to share with everybody, maybe don't do that. <laughs> uh, hold it off because if you start talking to the walkie talkie, everyone here is going to hear it and it might interrupt somebody else's experience that they might be having at that time. Luckily, at the end of the entire night, we are going to meet back into here, and we're going to have a little debrief. Everyone's going to talk about their experiences, what stood out to them, maybe validate some things, maybe debunk some things. Uh, maybe you guys heard some kind of strange noise when you guys someone dropped their phone above them on the floor, and then we can debunk that. Or maybe you were feeling something in a particular room and no one else in your group was, but at a different point during the night, maybe you were feeling something. The same feeling in that same room. So then we can kind of validate those those different feelings and debunk things. So walkie talkies. Um, if you absolutely need to take a break or if you have any problems or questions or anything, obviously feel free to come over the walkie talkie then. I'm gonna have one and Devin is going to have one, so one of us will be able to assist you if you're having any troubles. Um, if you do need to take a break, feel free. Um, just let us know. All the lights are going to be up, um, but the lights over by the benches are going to be on um, because investigating, it is really fun, but sometimes it can be really terrifying. Um, I've had to take some breaks myself in the past and hang out in the courtyard, so if anyone needs to do that, feel free. Don't feel ashamed of it. I've ran out of this house before, so if you have to, that's fine. Next piece of equipment. Everyone knows what a flashlight is. I also assume, much like the walkie-talkie, it's pretty basic. It is a flashlight. Uh, one, because it's dark inside and you need to see. You have to push it a few times for it to actually go off. Um, these can also be used as investigative tools or trigger objects. Each group is going to get two flashlights. Now, the reason that they're all different colors is because trigger objects. You can see if maybe the spirits will turn one on or turn one off, and you can use the colors to identify if maybe you're asking yes or no question. Maybe yes, turn on the black flashlight, no, turn on the red flashlight, or 
let's flip it around. Uh, we do have children spirits here, so if anybody is good with kids, that might help you as well. So they like to play. Uh, kids like to have fun. So maybe set a flashlight down and see if it'll roll towards you or roll away from you. You can ask different things like this. These flashlights are very handy, not just for safety and seeing, but investigating as well. Well, it's flashlight. Next up. <laughs> these things here. I don't even know what these are. EMF detectors, K2 monitors, just EMFs or K2s, whatever you want to call them. So these things, um, they detect electromagnetic frequencies going on around them. Now, they're already going to be turned on. Each group is going to be two of these. When the green light is on, that means you don't have to do anything with it. It's already running. So these can be used when well, they do detect electromagnetic frequency. That's one of the reasons why your phones are on airplane mode, because if they weren't, these would be going off. Um, if I put my phone up to it right now, it might start doing stuff. Kind of blinking a little bit. They kind of freaking out. So that's why your phones are on airplane mode. Mine's not, and it's making it go off. So these can be used in a number of different ways. You can walk around with them, and if it starts freaking out, maybe stop and see if it keeps on going. Move it into another location, and if it stops, then put it back where it was. And if it keeps on going, what was that? <laughs> no one knows. These can also be used, kind of like the flashlight tricks, um, but rather than having different colors, we've had people in the past put one on one side of the room and one on the opposite side of the room. And if one starts going off, then this is one case in particular. Somebody did this, and the one was on one side of the room. And it started going off, and they're like, okay, I can see you over there. Can you move away from that K2 and go to the next one? This one stopped going. This one started going. So you can try different things like that as well. Um, maybe just put one in the middle of the floor, and everyone sit around it, and just have a regular conversation. If someone, if there was a big crowd of people in your house, and they were just talking about literally anything, you probably want to know what they were talking about, so you probably want to get in on that circle. So maybe try that out. The troop is going to get two of these. Oh. The next bit. This is the last piece of equipment that you will be responsible for. Um, not the last I'm going to go over, though. Everyone knows what these are. Does everybody know what these are? Mm -hmm. Not quite a ready order. It is a spirit box. Yes. Uh, a spirit box, ghost box, voice box, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's basically a real fancy radio. Uh, so, like an EVP recorder. Uh, that is one way to communicate with spirits, which actually hearing them. Um, but, unlike the EVP recorder, you can have a conversation with spirits in real time with these. Uh, because when you're recording, you have to play back the recordings. That's when you hear your responses. This has a speaker on it, so you'll hear those responses in real time. You can kind of just talk back and forth if you want. These are really cool. Um, now, there are two buttons that are very important. If you would like to get a closer look, I'll bring it around. So this button here is the power button. That is the most important button <laughs> on this device. The power button is right here. Is it one of the ones that like noisily cycles through the channels, or is it quiet? It's pretty quiet. Uh, when you first turn it on, it is going to sound like this. But then, when you start sweeping through all the different channels, it's real quiet, and it's really quiet. So you kind of have to like make sure that there's not a whole lot of noise going on when you're using it. So the next button. The power button, you hold that in and it turns on. Then this button here is Sweep REV or Sweep Reverse. So, yeah, it's, you can hear it cycling through all the different radio frequencies. Um, now, when it is doing that, you can hear it 
popping over all the different channels right there. Now, what you're looking for in these, you will get, it is a radio, so you're going to hear the radio. Uh, and when that happens, you'll be able to tell, definitely, because since it's going over multiple frequencies cycling through, the radio is going to sound just like one channel. Now it's like just, you're going to hear like some syllables coming through, the typical blips and bleeps, and then maybe some music coming through at one point. But when it is not the radio, when it is something else, it's going to extend over one or over two or more channels. So if something's, you hear that like kind of same beats per minute going on, if you hear something extending over multiple channels, if you hear multiple words from the same voice, that's probably not the radio. Um, people have described it as a lot louder than the typical radio stations coming through, and people have described hearing it as overlaying the radio. So, like, you hear the radio coming in underneath, but then you'll hear another voice over top of that radio frequency. So that's what you're looking for, Pete. So um, you stop the panning like you were hearing something, and you stop it from no, continuing. Um, <laughs> kind of, yeah. I can't <laughs> really. So they would over. Yeah. Everything else yeah. Yeah. If something does start to come through, um, it is probably if it is a spirit, it is gonna like extend over multiple frequencies, so we'll continue with the sweeping, which that makes it really nice. Um, much like your K2s, what I would do with these, maybe have a spirit box session. Um, also, since your phones are on airplane mode, you can have them near the equipment, and it might not make it go off. So if you have a voice recorder app on your phone. I would put this down, there's a little kickstand on it. So I would maybe set it down, put your phone next to it, and have your phone recording, and just ask a series of questions. Maybe just have a regular conversation like I mentioned with the kids. You have a whole spirit box session where everybody in the room just sits around the spirit box and just has a conversation. Um, but yeah, if you want to record, that's totally fine. And each group's gonna get one of these. Uh, once you have them, you're more than welcome to test it out and make sure that you've got all the buttons that you need. <laughs> I just, yeah, instinct, instinctively just go right for the center. <laughs> you can control everything on this investigation with all the equipment for your group. Right. Everyone feel comfortable with those K2s? Mm -hmm. Alright, now. Two more pieces of equipment. The ones that you have now are the pieces that you are responsible for tonight. Um, so at the end, once you do the whole debrief, everyone is going to bring themselves and all of that equipment I handed out to you back into here. Um, there are some stationary pieces of equipment that are just going to be placed throughout the property in each location. Um, these do not need to be moved, do not need to be touched. Um, if you do touch them, they're probably going to end up going off and they're messing up. Um, you will get some false readings, they're already calibrated and everything. So there is no need to touch them. This, first up. I don't even know what this is. Rimpod. Yeah. So the Rimpod is a really fancy K2. Really fancy. Um, it is setting out its own electromagnetic field around it. And if you obstruct that field, it's going to go off, it's going to blink, it's going to make a lot of noise, like this. And it is 360 degrees. And the closer you get to it, the more annoying it's going to be. So, these are really fun. Um, and since it is a lot of fun, you are going to want to play with it. Please don't, um, because we have to set them up in a certain way, and if people start messing around with them, then it's going to make it mess up, and we're going to have to come into the room and interrupt the investigation and reset it and everything, and that's no fun for anybody. Um, but one of these is going to be stationed in each location. Feel free to maybe reach out to some of the children's spirits, please. Um, kids like things that light up and make a lot of noise, so these are helpful with that. Um, we've had people in the past do a little bit more um, in-depth investigating, I guess? I don't know. Maybe ask if, or make a game out of it. See if they'll make the light turn green. If they'll make the light turn blue, or purple, or red. Um, if it's going off, maybe ask, can you move away from the REM pod? Um, also, you don't need to demonstrate how these things work. We run this event every single week. 
Um, so they see these all the time. They probably know more about this thing than I do. <laughs> so if you are trying to demonstrate, then again, that will involve touching it and possibly uncalibrating it, which is no good. Next piece is this. They don't know what this thing is. This is my favorite piece of equipment because it's like eight things in one. Um, actually, kind of just three, but it's really cool. This is an EDI research device, and it has its own EMF sensor and a geophone in it. So a few different things that it's doing. It is telling the temperature, and right now it's blinking because it's trying to set itself up. Um, it's telling the temperature. So the temperature thing, it is pretty cool. Um, maybe not pay so much attention to the temperature thing, but it doesn't the other stuff that it has involved. With. It is going to be placed in an area of the mansion and maybe note what the temperature is when you walk into that area and then as you're leaving see what the temperature is afterwards and if it's uh, about i don't know more than three or four degrees higher or lower that's probably not natural and that's really cool so you can if you would like ask questions about the temperature maybe yes or no questions seeing if they'll make the temperature go up or down we have had success with that in the past so it's pretty fun it has its own EMF sensor. There are two blue lights right here on it, and those will start blinking, um, much like your K2s. It's the exact same thing as the K2. But what's really cool about this thing is the geophone. So, someone over here is stomp your foot. And someone over here is stomp your foot. Alright, yeah, a little bit. See the thing lighting up on the bottom? So, geophone is detecting the vibrations and as you can see it's really sensitive um my fingers are vibrating from my voice and it's picking that up this thing's really sensitive i am hardly touching this table right now so we're going to put this in an area where we get a lot of reports of footsteps um so maybe you can try seeing if somebody walk around and maybe you won't hear the footsteps but they'll just start going off that's always fun when that happens Maybe you can see if somebody will knock back. Maybe knock a couple of times to see if they'll knock back the same amount of times. Maybe do the... And see if we get another response with the two knocks. So this is going to be placed um, by a staircase where we do get a lot of reports and footsteps. So this thing is really fun. And that was a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Does anybody have any questions? Everyone gets... Do you feel like uh, the later shows are... Events have better readings, or does it really just vary? Um, it kind of varies all the time. Like we get people that take our history tours because we don't give um, we give tours that aren't even about ghosts. They don't mention anything about them, and we get people coming back to take our paranormal tours because they have experiences on the history tours. And those, the last one ends at five p.m. Um, so yeah, people get people get stuff here often, and <laughs> then all throughout. The Wow. You will have access to upstairs of the uh, church house? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that is one area where we're going to be going. Now, I got one question. Yes. I actually, I guess it's going to be some other question. But anyway, <laughs> um, I forgot some of the names of these uh, ghosts that have been known to have been in this place? In this place. All right. Um, so, just to recap, <laughs> that's what we're about to do, actually. Okay. So, we're about to do last time. Okay. okay. Somebody, like, that would be scary. Yeah. No, it might be from the alleyway. Okay. There is an alleyway right there. There's, um, there's, always, there's always people in the Artillery. Yeah, yeah, artillery right in there. Uh, there is Mellow Mushroom, the pizza shop, like also right over there. So when you're upstairs, you hear loud crashing, the bottles breaking. They're probably throwing away their trash in the alley. Um, well, if everyone is ready, who's ready for a little mini ghost tour? Awesome. Um, right there.
All right. So while well, everyone's gathering around here, I'm going to point out that there is a fan right there. Um, it is really hot down here. So the fan is on if you would like to turn it off while you are investigating. That is completely fine. Um, also, is anyone opposed to me turning off the humidifier? Nope. All right, because they're really loud. Huh. Dehumidifiers being off are definitely going to assist you while you're trying to hear them. Uh, they're really loud. Ah. Welcome into the Sorrel Media House. We are standing in a 10,000 square foot free for Bible Mansion. Unfortunately, not every square inch is going to be covered this evening. Luckily, though, the entire property is haunted, and there's enough of it to go around, so we got that. <laughs> so down here. This would have been the working quarters for 9 to 15 enslaved people. This house it was originally built for Francis Sorrell in the year of 1838, and he had it built for his second wife, Matilda, as a wedding gift. Now, they would have owned about 9 to 15 enslaved people at a time. Down here was the working over on this side was a kitchen space, and over on that side was another kitchen space, and the fireplace is where they prepared all of these food. So maybe while you're down here investigating, you're out in this main area, try to reach out to some of these enslaved people, um, see what they're doing, what they're making, what kind of food they're cooking, maybe they're preparing for a party, or ask different questions like that. Um, you can also ask maybe about any military personnel that might be around here. Because there was a point before this house was built, and there was a British officer of barracks during the Revolutionary War. Siege of Savannah was the second bloodiest battle during this war, and it took place outside of the square. Thousands of bodies are now laying underneath that square in these surrounding areas. There was an officer of barracks right here that was destroyed during that battle, so it is very likely that if you were to remove this floor and maybe remove some dirt, there might very possibly be remains of people underneath this floor. Ah, so let me reach out to them if you would like. We don't get a whole lot of success with that for some odd reason. Um, they might be there, they might not be there. Maybe you can find out and validate this for us. Who knows? So the enslaved and the soldiers in this main area here. The reason why we started in this particular spot was not for any of that, but for one spirit in particular. Probably the most common one that people have interactions with. Now, he's going to sound absolutely terrifying. I promise he's not that bad. Um, he looks really terrifying. We give him our own name, we shadow him. And you can probably guess what he looks like at this point. We're not that creative with our names. A shadow man. Every single time that someone has seen him, they describe him as a normally tall, seven to eight feet tall, indistinguishable features. So there's a very tall, three-dimensional shadow. Like if a shadow off came off of the wall and was moving all over the place. He can be seen all around him. Most of the time, though, people have said that they see him in this breezeway back here, sometimes walking back and forth, sometimes darting back and forth. More recently, for some strange reason, we've gotten reports of him standing in between the staircase and this door right here. I don't know why that is. Uh, he just chose a new spot to like, I guess. Um, but this is Shadow Man here, right? And also, since this is a historic museum, that means that about 99.9% .9 of the furniture was going to be options. Uh, however, there is one of very few pieces right here. So we're more than welcome to see. We've got people come back to this house just for Shadow Man's chair. Um, people get really strange feelings while they're sitting in that chair. People have felt paralyzed to the point where they can't even get out or move out of the hallway, even though they really, really want to. Um, in that case in particular, <laughs> I'm not a fan of that chair personally. Um, another kind of more extreme case, there was a man who didn't really believe in much, and he was on an investigation. He sat in that chair, and he ran out of the courtyard in tears. So that he felt every single emotion that he'd ever experienced in his entire life rush him all at once in a wave while sitting in his chair. So we left it here, and you are more than welcome to sit in while I'm investigating. Shadow Man's really cool. <laughs> he doesn't sound very cool, but he is. Um, so what I would do, maybe, a little tip for everybody, uh, is go away from the rest of your group and maybe have your own personal time in Shadow Man's chair. Maybe don't even bring any equipment. 
just kind of sit there and see what kind of different feelings or emotions you can get. Um, it's really cool, and I think it's terrifying. Um, so now we're going to move on. If you go back this way, you can pull open those doors and head into the next room. I will open up all these guys. And it's so cool. I'm just going to open up these doors all the way. <laughs> yeah, this couch is also totally fine to sit. Alright, so a few different pieces of furniture that I wanted to point out in this room. One of them is this couch. This couch, absolutely fine to sit in. We've had much like Shadow Man's chair in his breezeway. People have come back to the house for this couch alone. Uh, people get a lot of strange experiences in that, but I'll get to that in a little bit. This chair right here, not okay to sit. This chair is a very antique, very fragile. It'll probably break if you sit on it, um, so please don't. And this wheelchair, also very old, very antique. 
fragile, and there's a REM pod sticking out of it, so that's not going to be comfortable if you sit in it regardless of the level. So that's where the REM pod is down here. Um, however, even though that you are not allowed to mess around with these pieces of furniture, they might move. They have before. Uh, people have heard this chair being drug across the floor, even though it was sitting completely still and never moved. People have heard it move. Same with the wheelchair. There is a really squeaky metal wheel on the back, and people are very scraping across the bricks as if someone was pushing the wheelchair around. So that might happen. Why are in here? Um, in this room, it was used as storage, mostly dry storage would be kept in here. But there was another time, from 1845 to 1850, when this served a different purpose. In here, for five and a half years, was the medical office for a Dr. Frank Sorrell. Now, he was one of Francis's children. Um, in this case, they had a bolt from there. Now, this room was his operating room. He was a trauma surgeon. And throughout these five and a half years, he was absolutely one of the best. He had one of the lowest mortality rates in the entire nation. But even though he was one of the best, he still lost over half of his patients in this room. There was a lot of death in this room. We do not have any substantial evidence to make us believe that Dr. Frank himself is still here. However, we do kind of believe that some of his patients are probably still around. So we reach out to some of his patients, uh, see what injuries they had, um, ask them more about their lives. Who knows? Also in this room, uh, there is the spirit of a little girl named Sarah. Um, she's not just in here, though. She's all around down here. She's really fun, uh, cool character. She likes to play hide-and-seek. Now, the way that you can play hide-and-seek with Sarah, she is a spirit. You can't see her all that well. So she has a bit of an advantage. But the way that you can find her, she usually likes to hide underneath things. Uh, so when you go in front of a table, you go in front of a piece of furniture, sitting on a couch or a bench, you might, in fact, find Sarah, and she'll let you know. Uh, untying one of your shoes, that's pretty common. Even more common is grabbing your ankle and tugging on it. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that you can tell that you are being touched by a spirit, it's probably not going to feel like a human touch. So if you do feel a human touch, it's someone that you came here with trying to scare you. The way that you can tell that it's a spirit, probably is going to feel like a loose hair or a spider web. It doesn't exist. It, you can't find it anywhere. If you brush it away, it doesn't go away. It might feel like a feather. It might feel like a burning sensation. If somebody has a lighter, they're holding it up to a small patch of skin like that. Um, different temperature changes and little tiny patches of your body. Maybe if you get really cold in one spot. If you get really hot in one spot. Um, it also might feel like pins and needles. It's been described as that before. Almost to the point where it kind of stings, it itches, it feels like a part of your body has gone to sleep. People describe it as that as well. Now, the earring kid, he is a spirit in here. We're not really sure who he is. Um, I have never said this before, but recently I kind of had the theory that maybe it's Bobby. Uh, we believe that the earring kid, he is just a child that sees shiny things and he likes to play with them. So maybe reach out to him if you have anything shiny, like jewelry or bracelets, necklaces, watches, anything like that. Maybe see if he'll play with them. That was awesome. A lot of information in a short amount of time. Any questions before moving on upstairs? Yeah, is there any electrical items in this house that would cause the case to go um, No. Nope. nope. We're going to be turning on all the lights. Yeah. Oh, there are some ACs on upstairs, so but they're like ceilings are like 14 feet high, so that won't be a problem. Um, any questions? Nope. <laughs> All right, so we'll right out here. If we go around here, I'm going to blow out these things,
Francis, he was a businessman, and in order to extend his political status throughout Savannah, he would host these giant parties and invite hundreds of people to them. Um, unfortunately, these women are not going to hold hundreds of people, so they would have to begin outside of the square. That was used as the Sorrell's front yard. But late into the evening, the party died down, people started going home. These Sorrells would invite their closest friends and family, a very elite few of people, to be brought back into the house. And this is where the party would continue. They would have a feast, there would be a table sprawled out across the entire floor, and then they would bring this table out, bring in a band, and they would drink. They would dance around on these floors very early into the morning. Once there were a few people left, they would split into two separate groups. Over here, the men would gather, and over on this side is where the women would gather. They would close these pocket doors. All of their conversations could then be held confidential to each other. But over here, the men, they'd be smoking cigars. They'd be drinking whiskey, talking about business, war, politics, other manly things. While in their heads, the women would be sitting over here and sipping on tea, talking about Savannah life. Probably also smoking and drinking and talking about more important things, though. But we'll leave it up to you. So, that is what happened in here. Um, they were party rooms. They were also the living rooms, the family rooms, the most beautiful rooms of the house. Um, so not only did they host these extravagant, wonderful, fun parties, if a lost loved one was ever having a wake, they would be in here having this wake. So maybe you're not walking up into a party tonight, Maybe you're walking into something a little more serious, a little more sad. Uh, so try to reach out, see if there's a party going on, see if something not so pleasant is happening. Uh, up here, I would try maybe splitting up um, versus gender on your group. Maybe have the men in your group gather over here, have the women gather over here. Maybe flip it and see what happens. Um, maybe they won't like that and see what you like a lot. Um, I'm going to head them this way, where the main story of the evening will be told. So on this blue patch here is where the ground pod is placed up here. Uh, this is where everyone knows where it's at. It's right here. Now, you entered a haunted house, notably the one of the most actively haunted locations in the United States, and you had to be expecting at least some sort of tragedy. Uh, you heard about the surgeries, you heard about the soldiers possibly underneath the floor. There was a bit more gruesome of a tragedy, more family-oriented. March 27th of 1860, these Sorrells are setting up for one of these very large parties, much like they always do. And Matilda, the lady of the house, she wants to check in on the preparations for that party. She wants to see and make sure everything is running smoothly. So she decides to ask her head housemaid, Paul, the head of all of the enslaved, their supervisor. Excuse me. She tells everyone what to do, and she tells them how to do it. So it's really important that she's around. Matilda goes looking for her, but she can't find her anywhere. She's running all throughout the house. She's asking everyone if they've seen her, and no one had. So the last place that she thought to look, if Molly wasn't inside setting up for the party, maybe she was getting ready. So she went across the courtyard into the carriage house to Molly's personal bedroom. I'm going to take each group up there individually. Uh, whenever you go up there to investigate, I'll bring you up there personally. Um, but what you will see is a large area in the first portion of the carriage house. You'll see a room off to the side by itself. The big area was the main communal living space for those 9 to 15 enslaved. And that room off to the side, that was Molly's personal bedroom. There was a staircase out in the courtyard that went up to the balcony outside, which is no longer there. And that's the only way that you could enter either of these two rooms. So Matilda ran up the stairs, and she knocked on Molly's door. She never got an answer, though, so she opened the door. And when she did, Molly was absolutely in her bedroom, uh, but unfortunately, she also found her husband, Francis. Now, Francis being a slave owner, Molly being a slave, that was not exactly the greatest thing to enter. Um, so, seeing that, she runs down the stairs, goes back into the house, and locks herself in her bedroom above us. Then makes her way up to the balcony, and eventually throws herself off of that balcony, landing headfirst into the courtyard. 
dying from her injuries. About two weeks later, again, the Sorrells are searching for Molly. They go throughout the entire house, and they do not find her anywhere. So they go up to check in her bedroom. And once again, Molly is found in her bedroom, but this time she was hung from the rafters. Now there is mystery surrounding both of their deaths. I cannot tell you if the children was pushed. I cannot tell you if she was fainted or if she fainted. I cannot tell you if she jumped. I've heard all of these different things. But what I can tell you is that in a local cemetery, you can find the Sorrell's family crypt, in which you will not find Matilda with the rest of her family. She has an unmarked grave elsewhere in the cemetery. Usually in the 1800s, the only reason for that would be if it was a suicide death. As for Molly's, even more mysterious, even less documented, she was enslaved. So they told everyone, she did it to herself, and that was it. No one really cared. It was done. But Molly was around 4 foot 11. The rafters, which are still the original ones you'll see in her bedroom tonight, those are about 8 feet in the air. But being enslaved, it's highly unlikely for her to have any furniture tall enough to assist you getting up any furniture at all, for that matter. And also, it is important to note that in the 1800s, the white man's way of birth was almost always by hand. So there is a mystery around both of their deaths. We're never going to be exactly sure what happened to either of them. Most people do believe Matilda jumped over the balcony out of her own free will and Molly was murdered. Uh, which is why tonight, while you are investigating, the most important rule that I do ask you to follow is respect for these spirits. Um, none of their deaths came in any good way, especially these two. We do believe that Matilda and Molly are still here. Um, so you are more than welcome to reach out to either of them. Please do so with the utmost respect. Um, murder, suicide, not anything we take away from you. Now, that was a big downer, um, but who's ready to investigate? Okay, we can get to that. Um, well, yeah. You for did you wanna start the party? Let's get up here. Alright. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know how to open up this door. You won't open up or close either of the two parlor doors. Um but if you open this one, maybe you can get into the door. Um but if you open this one, make sure like if you end up closing it at some point, whenever you open it again, if you don't open it all the way, it's a really heavy old door and it's gonna close by itself, it's not a good thing. It doesn't hold go. Um, also, for anyone while you're investigating up here, this is an almost 200 year old house, so the floor is really loud. <laughs> Maybe don't stomp around up here or shout while you are investigating. People below you are going to hear it. Same with the people downstairs. People up here are going to hear it. And that's no claim for anybody. Any questions before you guys get started? Yeah, the drawing pot's already on and it's up in the middle. All right, well, fair enough. So you will go through this doorway and head down those stairs. <laughs> I'm going to turn out these lights and have to investigate it. So you can touch them. I'm just trying to learn. Brian, Cynthia? Brian? Danielle. Danielle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. One more thing, I'm sorry. I'm going to close this door across the hall um, just to make an extra sound barrier so it's not like interfering with anything. But yeah. Good luck. It's a bitter barrier. Okay. 
here, here, set off the CMF reader. Hello. What kind of preventer are you having this evening? Could you repeat that? Hello. What kind of preventer are you having this evening? Are you going to celebrate this evening? Hello. Is this Matilda we're speaking with? Or somebody else? So I can catch the heat for yourself? Well, we build us. Can you be here? Is there something in particular you are celebrating or mourning? Someone else? Who are we speaking with? Myself. Mm -hmm. I hear you correctly. Very beautiful home. What are you celebrating this evening? Are you alone or do you have friends with you? Friends and family? Are you with us? Are you guys something? Hello, sir. Tell us about yourself.
this light meter light up? Or how about that little box on the sofa? Can you make it turn red? Or green? So have you seen the latest fashions from Paris? Yes, please. Lucinda, three children. Play the piano. He plays the song. Just touch one of the keys. Is anybody at home?
have to be more questions. Could you knock three times for us? Thank you. Can you finish this? Thank you. What's your name? How long have you lived in this house? Worked in this house? Can you come to the doorway so I can take your picture? Did you cook in this house? Okay. What did you use to cook? What was your favorite dish to make?
what would you like us to know about you? your name? But that, that was the clearest one, Paul. Paul when we learned it. what is in Paul. If there's anyone in here, can you show us by lighting up the room spot on the chair? You think you already know how to use it. But in case you don't know, all you have to do is wave your hand in front of it and make it light up. Can you make all that light up for us? I think it must be upstairs. I saw a flush right in the window. Right in the doorway, up in the window. There's a quick, like, little something. Paul, are you still with us? Is there anyone else in this room with us tonight? If you're a patient of Dr. Sorrell, maybe I can help. I am a nurse. I have medical training. All you have to do is make that, that red light turn green. Can you do that for me? Say hello. Hello. Hi. If you need medical attention, can you make that red light turn green? You can turn it to blue, I don't care. Blue, purple, whatever color you like. Were you here as a patient? Is this your desk? What were you writing? Two pieces of furniture in the whole house that belong together in the mirrors. Are you okay with us being here? Okay, let's pick up.
set off this little box. Okay. Maybe turn the colors into it. You like it dark? You like the lights on? Okay. Can you see the box? You don't like the box? Is this a special occasion? What's going on this evening? Are we too late for the tea? Which house was it that had the uh,
you mind if we close these doors? Yes, more visitors. Oh. Yep. Yeah. 
So, um, Matilda, there's rumors that you've been spotted in this room multiple times. Of course she's been spotted. This is her house. Yeah, it's so this is the parlor room. It's a very nice house that you guys have. Yes, it is. And we're very thirsty. Would you guys could offer us a drink or something? Daddy, don't ask that. Maybe a smoke? Smoke, yes. Yeah. I hear uh I hear y'all have some nice parties here. We came to visit. Oh no, this is interspersed with random like hip hop music. Do you guys like having a bunch of parties? So this is the ballroom. Very nice. Box, you can. We would like to communicate with someone here. Is there anyone with us tonight? We came to visit. Get a lot of people come through your house. It is a beautiful house. We appreciate you letting us be here. So you have a very pretty doll in the corner chair. We 
who would like to communicate with someone in this room, if you could talk to us, please. Give us some sort of sign. Let us know whether we are welcome or not. I bumped into the chair. Yeah, that's what I mean. Hello, Dr. Frank? Assistance. Can you help me? Can I stab you? Can you help me? I have to stab you first. We hear you do a lot of good things in here. Is this your operation room? Or is there somebody here that Dr. Craig helps? Are you allowed to? That's the one you're allowed to sit on? Make sure there's no cockroaches. Hello, Dr. Frank. Do you know that Danielle here does anesthesia? Maybe she can help you. Can we help you? If we aren't alone, can you make the light go off? Can you make the light go off? Hello there. 
Wheelchair move, please. Is this noise bothering you? You want me to turn it off? Is that better? Make yourself known. We need some excitement. Your trauma room is kind of boring. So you're a surgeon. Can you tell us about it? Dr. Frank? Dr. Frank, are you in the wheelchair? Dr. Frank, are you by the wheelchair? Dr. Frank, can you go by the wheelchair? <coughs> Dr. Frank, can you wake up? Frank, it is very hot down here. How did you do surgery? It was just hot. Is anyone with us? I thought basements are supposed to be cooler. Is anyone with us? It's okay. We're not here to hurt you. We want to learn about you. We want to hear what you have to say. So what happened when you sat in the chair? Yeah, that's all. Sorry about that. Um, we can play a game if we want. We can play a game if we want. Huh? Oh, okay. 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 Oh, ok
It's ten points. If you touch the tiny boxes, it's five. If you touch our feet, it's negative five. <laughs> we came in here to visit. Please make this move for us. This will be so awesome. I'd like to see it work. Okay, so I'm going to pick up this tiny box. I'm going to move it around the room. And if you want to make it light up, go to your favorite spot. That would be pretty lit. And if you don't know what lit means, that means cool. Are there any women with us in here tonight? Matilda, if you're here? We would very much like to meet you. Yeah, we would love to meet you, Matilda. Um, I will do it, but like, no. <laughs> there is such a butt out. Oh, no, pick it up. Bring it over here. Yeah, it was I really want to see these clowns move this little toy. Can you please do that? Can someone come sit on the blue couch for me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody come sit on the blue couch. We can, we can share tea and talk about politics. We can share tea and spill tea? Yeah, we can spill tea. So it just means sharing information. Means gossip. Yeah. Oh, good yeah. gossip. Which, you want on lately? Spilling tea means spilling with gossip, which means spilling good information about crappy people. Oh, gossip. Oh. What? Writing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, what do you guys think about Trump being president? It doesn't can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> 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 yeah, they are. Oh, 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 oh. Who's the president? It depends what year. So, did you guys hear about how about that Abe Lincoln? Yeah, how about <laughs> Abe Lincoln? He's a haughty, yeah. swell dude. Seems a seems pretty honest. Haughty, right? He right? loves cigars. Love, oh. love tall men. Yeah. <laughs> Love eight. Could you give us a sign of some kind? I'd really like to communicate with someone tonight. Dad, will you take one of those boxes and go in that room? Yes. Yeah, because you're a boy. They probably don't want to talk about gossip while you're in there. Well, because that's like, this, uh, that's, because they're like, so now that the stinky boy is gone, get back in oh, here. Oh, no, I'm gonna close the door. Uh, no! Oh, oh, no! No, you're not. You're just gonna go that way. Oh, and also they might have no, you guys hear that. You guys hear that. They sound like someone. I do hear that. Running on the floor and running down the stairs. Who's crawling the stairs? Do we want to go sit in the hallway? No, I do not. I have a question. Is that mom? Do you know my friend? Is he your dad? Is he your father? 
Are you not oh, I don't I don't deal with those things. Uh -huh. Moths. I have a phobia towards moths. I have a phobia. <coughs> Is this an eighteenth century typical?
Dad, you will definitely. Dad, walk out of the room again. You will definitely. Yeah, it happened whenever. We first want to say thank you for inviting us to your home. It's a lovely home. Hi. 
Maybe I could stay the night. Maybe we could have dinner. Would you entertain your friends in this room? Would you have dances? Would you play the piano? Matilda, is this you and is this your picture? Can you come and show me where your picture is, your portrait? Matilda, if that's your portrait, can you wave your hand in front of it for me, please? I'd like to get to know you. How old were you when you got married? Who's in here with us? What is your name? Are you a soldier? Do 
Do you fight for General Lee? Did you know about General Sherman? About George Washington? We are looking for Sarah. Is Sarah here tonight? Sophia loves kids. She works with kids. Maybe you guys could say hey to Sarah? Sarah. I mean, Sophia? You are logging into it like it's a lot of Sorry. <laughs> I'm used to walkie talkies. Oh god, I swear. It might have been Adele. It might have been Adele, but like. But it also might have been a ghost. It might have been a ghost, but like I swear I heard hello. But it might have been Adele. Do you guys want to say hey to Sarah? So Sophia? You guys want to say hey to Sophia? Wait, do you guys want to say hey to Sophia? <laughs> well, we well, we can hear them too, so shut up. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mentally, yes. Also, physically. <laughs> Watch you guys feel like saying this stuff. Well, Aren't you happy that we grew together? Like, yeah, it's the coolest people ever. Yeah, we're just like. Could someone please give us a sign here tonight? We would like to communicate with anyone here tonight. Are you guys? Anyone like playing hide and seek? You look in there. Well, here, take this one. Just go. I want to talk to them now. I'll be back. Okay. Are you guys in here? Talk to me in here. Okay. Can you take a book from the cabinet?
Can I read a book from your cabinet? May I read a book? Okay. Proper grammar. Would you like to sit down? Can you sit down over here and make this light up for us, please? I did it. You did it? Can you do that again for us? May you please answer this? Is that you just now? I'm going to do it again. Could you please answer? I'm going to stand over here and I'll get out of your way and just let you let me play with it. We come to have fun. I swear y'all are shaking so bad. Let's see right now. I don't know. Um, so I need to the so hard. Huh? I said I need to in the basement so hard. Yeah. I'm regretting my name. Okay, I just need to breathe. <laughs> I took all the air out of my system. Is somebody here scratching the 
the girl beside me. Or maybe trying to tickle her. Or maybe you're trying to play tag or hide and seek. With Sarah. Sophia. Sophia. Sarah's a little girl. I know, I keep on. They sound alike. So it's kind of so. Something for activities. Please don't grab Sophia's. <laughs> Um, if you're trying to play, where'd you go? Fuck. Hello, what is that? It's on. He's shadow dead. He's shadow dead. He pops up out of nowhere. No, but I have felt something. Like either scratch or like burn me on my side, okay. on my neck, and on my thigh. Now. And while you were away, you're scaring the life out of her. So while you were gone, something like grabbed my wrist, like lightning, really? but something grabbed my wrist. That's what that's what he said. It could feel like that or a. Um, well, I've seen a child one, so. Like a spider web like, feeling, or I even really burning. Right now. Like I cannot hold this thing still. Well, we would like to communicate with anyone in here. If you could please say hello, because we do have to leave in like 15 minutes, and we really would like to get to know you. I'm just getting here paranoid now. I think you're going to see something. But I think it's just me being here. Can we hear something else besides Whitney Houston and Ariana and Adele? Is there anyone in the basement that would like to say hello? Could you please that. talk to us? Would you like to play? We would like to get to know who you are. If you'd like to play games. Who was the one who grabbed my wrist? Could you please grab my ankle right now? Anyone want to play? We got several. Uh -uh. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got several. We have several. We have two right here. See? Right there. There's a nice set of legs you could grab a hold of. Or untie yeah, my shoes. Untie my shoes. That would be awesome. Yeah. No. Have you heard of Indiana? No. 
Who am I speaking with? Could you tell me who you are? Was that you who just screamed? How can we help you? Yeah, 
Less than a year old. Yeah. Right 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 Oh. We had it open. We told yeah. my dad to get out because we're I like ladies only. We're gonna have lady party. And then Riley walked out. They yeah. had me at the door open, but nobody saw it. And then I turned around and I was like, just closed. I was like, I looked at it and I was like, I can't take a picture. I was like, that was not open before. He had taken a picture of the the picture of Sorrel and Matilda. Yeah. And the cabinet was closed. That's and we kept awesome. hearing doors open and close. And has... Also downstairs, I saw a kid running in the... In the, the... This one scared the heck out of me if I just walked into the room. <laughs> <laughs> He's shadow dead. He's yeah. shadow dead. <laughs> Something grabbed my wrist. <laughs> I, think, I think he was six yeah, eight foot tall, right? In the basement, we had some creepy kid stuff happening. I saw a little kid run. And then stuff before the investigation went started. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to like get people freaked out. Right. Uh, get <laughs> Sounds like it was pretty exciting. Um, in this deep report, Devin will be in. I don't know how any of this cashier yeah, stuff works, but Devin does. Oh, you're <laughs> fine. She comes in. Yeah, water is all good. Um, yeah. Let's go group by group. You guys. Um, what stood out to you the most? Amazing. Amazing. We're getting it. We're getting responses from the chair over there. Yeah. Like That's they were knocking, sound. and it was matching knocks yeah. in the chair. Like, Shaving a haircut, it would read the bond, ask for three knocks, and At first, it kind of sounded like maybe water was trickling, but it wasn't a steady rhythm. It was like kind of actual explosion. Yeah. 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 When we first got in there, when we first got in there, something happened under the couch. That's what set it off. You know, it's like the the room. Room. Yeah. Yeah. And then they moved into the oh, other room, and we all moved in there when they started. We even got a response on that. To me, it's like something that's like smoothed across the desk. Yeah, she was standing closer to the fireplace. Something heavy. One of them bumped the chair. Yeah. Something straight across that desk, and we marked the time on it. I mean, because you can see both of us turn, all of us turn around. It's like the back of the door. You can hear it. It's loud. Yeah. Oh when I was at the parlor, we were asking, like, did you know General Lee? And on the recorder, I just on the voice box and said, I'm not real. It was very clear. Like, oh, 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 oh. We said different. We thought, what's different? And then yes. we said, we sound different. different. Said, yeah. huh. and we look different. It said, but it's some kind of or somewhat. What was it? Maybe maybe they didn't I think it was when we asked the name, like who was here, we heard Bobby sort of on the speaker, and then by the fireball. We got a call. We got a call. And then there was giggling under the. Yeah, there was giggling. I just like the story. I asked them to run. But once they posted, we had to go back and try to find him. We asked if he was trying to use us, and if they have doors out in the hall. Oh, this seems pretty accurate. I'm going to see if you can see it. You heard it twice. Yeah. Uh, one of them, it sounded like multiple doors. Yep. You got it. Us? What was that to you? What was crazy with okay. you guys? Uh, something kept like touching or scratching me. Okay. Because I felt it here on my side, here on my neck, and on my thigh. And in the basement, something grabbed my wrist like lightly. Mm -hmm. And um, in the basement, she was asking questions on the spirit box, and it sounded like a kid said, are you looking for me? Ooh. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> <me out. laughs> I was like, are you here? Um, can you talk to us? And then I heard a little girl, and she said, are you looking for me? And then I like, for, I turned around, and I was like, no. <laughs> we were all talking at once, laughing about something. I think it had to do with your necklace. And oh, yeah. I swear I heard a kid laugh. <laughs> Uh, upstairs here in the carriage house, um, we heard like the same woman's voice go over multiple channels, and it started getting very active when uh, Shadow Dad, as you call him, um, noticed a cockroach under Molly's bed, and so he said, "Oh, Miss Molly, you have a big roach under your bed," and that's when the voice. We couldn't make out what it was saying, but it started getting very active, and then we had to switch. Aww. We did hear a conversation with the voices, yeah. like but we couldn't make out what we said. We thought we it was you. Too. Yeah, well, it was coming from the staircase. Yeah, we were that direction the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think I oh, saw Ollie running downstairs. 
So I'm actually talking to my boyfriend who was watching the live stream. He heard the kid laugh too. Oh, you're gonna do the camera. No. I, I want to go back way. and see it. I wonder and did he see the cabinet door? Open? Yeah, because we uh, when we were oh. upstairs. When you yeah, saw that's something what I'm dark. Yeah, that's what I'm too. Oh my god, for uh -huh. real? Ooh, oh, we had, um, we heard multiple instances of, like, the, <laughs> the doors, the doors oh, opening oh, upstairs, oh, and, um, he had taken a picture of the, oh, wow. picture of the owners, oh, and yeah. one of the cabinet doors, you can see it, and it was shut, and then, uh, he was in the other room, and us three were talking, and we just kind of stopped, and one of us go, was that door, oh, was that cabinet always open? Man, something funny, uh, when we first walked into that room during the whole tour, it was open and that closed it. So I know it was closed. Right? Well, it was closed when I took that picture. Yeah, because yeah. we and looked back at the picture and he checked the picture. Mm -hmm. That's too creepy. Yeah, I think because I touched it. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Oh, it's not uh, paranormal. No, sorry. Um, if you test it out, I think it's because the wood is expanding and then... Like the heat? Yeah, if you... If you Close it, and you keep walking by it, it'll keep reopening. Yeah, I know. Oh, yes, I would like one. Yes. Um, yes. Ooh. Yes. What about you guys? You fool. Well, I'm talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go to the house and start. You scared me, bro. You scared me. Um, Can we well, we she got the strongest reading out of all of us tonight. Yeah. yeah. There was one one time. He was getting a lot of the answers. But it's like kind of The biggest thing for us was that, that desk. The yeah. chair or the desk, because we all, she was in front of us, and holy crap, that was the desk. You should be able to hear it. I know there was somebody oh. on upstairs, but this was in the room. Yeah, it was very loud. There's also shadows upstairs. shadows in the room. Was there uh, like any particular area for you guys? Like that was more active than that? Oh, 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 well, it's her story to tell, but uh, that was a. I was say, that was strong. All of a sudden. Because I said I was waiting for her. When he was waiting for That's what I said. Did it work? Then it turned on. It was weird. It was like strong. I'm talking red. Yeah, the only time I've ever been off. Is that the. Yeah. 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 The only time it ever went off, and that other thing, that radio thing, I shut that off. Yeah. So maybe that was mad. So then he was like, hey, are, are you here? And I said, yeah, I'm in the corner waiting for a ghost to inappropriately touch me. And then the thing started going off. Which way was I didn't feel anything, though. Well, everyone seemed to be getting some stuff. That's exciting. More important. Everybody have a good time. Yes. <laughs> Alright. Well, um, I am going to go unlock the gate, but before I do that, uh, feel free. Don't feel obligated to. But these things here, I like to talk about. These are what cards I have. Um, so there's a few different things on these cards. Um, people were taking pictures and recording videos and audio and all sorts of things tonight. So go through all of that. Um, blow up your pictures, edit them. Maybe if you can't personally edit the audio to make it more clear, we have software to do that. So if you send us your audio, if you think something's in there, we can kind of clear it up and see if it is anything. Um, our email address is on these cards for that reason. Um, all of your evidence from your phones, you can definitely email it to us. Uh, all of our social media on these cards, so the Facebook page or YouTube channel, it's up on these cards. You can watch the live stream that was tonight. You are all now YouTube stars. Yeah, um, my friend said thank you for the stream. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, is it any over yet? What? Is the stream over yet? No, it's You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is, 
Well, so our Facebook, our YouTube thing, we post a lot of evidence um, on both of those. Even our Instagram, we have like those. Uh, so a lot of evidence that tour guides get that our cameras capture ball on tours. We will post all of that. You can go through and look it up. And we do have a trip advisor, which is uh, the greatest thing ever. Um, trip advisor, it really does help. Um, reviews are a very big part of this business. Uh, not only do they bring in people to the house, they help in another way um, because this is a non-profit organization. So when you purchase your tickets for this event tonight, uh, you absolutely and indefinitely donated to the restoration of this house and the property at this time. So we couldn't run this event without you guys. Thank you very much. You're the ones that help keep everything restored. Um, then we can help you out if you would like drinks, shirts, anything we have. Hey, we have those. Uh, we also, just... there's more sizes. I couldn't fit all of them on there, so if you want a different size in the investigation shirts, I do have them. Yeah, we just two got those in on Friday, so we're super excited about those. Anything else that you need or for anything? That's right here. I'm gonna go unlock the gate. This is your chance. Hello, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.
She just bought a, one of these shirts, what, two days ago? Yesterday. And these weren't out. I'm like, this one here. Yeah, we just got them. And I was like, I like those shirts. Was that what came through? Yeah. 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 Yeah.